Hey, I'm Big Jeff from BigJeffAudio.com. This is Car Audio 101, Episode 5. Big Jeff's Car Audio 101. In this episode of Car Audio 101, Big Jeff will be answering the following questions. How does the Big Jeff Car Audio Compact 22 Amp Hour 12 volt lithium LFP battery 6000 watts BJLI 22 amp hour perform in extreme weather conditions? What are the key differences between AGM, lithium, and sodium batteries for car audio applications? Why is a higher output alternator necessary when running certain types of batteries? Which types of batteries can or cannot be used together in the same system and why? What is the recommended HPF high pass filter setting for coaxial speakers and how does it affect sound performance? How can soundproofing a vehicle improve audio quality and reduce unwanted noise? Question one of five for episode five. How does Big Jeff Car Audio batteries, that's the 22 amp battery lithium, perform in extreme weather conditions? Great question. It comes up during the winter and it also comes up during the summer. Those batteries are a type of technology which is called LiPo 4. Everybody understand that. Now, it will discharge once it goes under 22 degrees. So what does that mean? If you're in a very, very cold area and the vehicle is just sitting, yes, it could start to discharge over time. Once it warms back up, you're good. Or once you start charging and warming it back up, you're fine. Optimal is 22 degrees and up and not as high as 176 degrees. That's why they're not made to go under the hood. Once you get above 176 degrees, which is very hot, you would also get into a discharge mode. Not instantly, but slowly. So you wanna keep, and that's a very easy range to keep in from 22 up, down from 176. Charging, perfect optimal is 41 degrees to 113. And what do I mean by that? That means in normal use, as long as in that vehicle, that compartment is between 41 and 113, you're in the optimal range. Now, again, that could be plus or minus, and there's a lot of other factors, but that's where those LiPo 4 technology lithium batteries work the best. Okay, keep that in mind. So if you're in a cold area, once the vehicle heats up, once you get some heat going in there, it'll raise the temperature, you're good to go. I just wouldn't go in there and just start boom, 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 going crazy. And or the same thing, sitting out in a super hot car, let it cool off a little bit. All right, that was question one. Let's get to the first comment. Triple J863. And he says unboxing, during a video we're doing unbox the B2 Audio 610 DSP. I think it is awesome update that would give you the ability to dial in an exact degree of phase instead of zero to 180, might have to pick one up. Okay, Triple J863, great insight. I pass that up the chain to B2 Audio himself. And basically what he's saying is on that DSP, you can switch zero or 180 degree. He's saying it would be cool if that was like a potentiometer type where you could adjust it to a particular degree for that phase. Uh, we will pass it up the ladder and see if that's something that can be done or upgrade or in a different version, or if it's even worth doing it or not. But I see you and now you see me. All right, question number two. What are the key differences between AGM, lithium, sodium for car audio? Okay, big question all the time because you're seeing more and more sodium out there. I'm gonna break this down, I made some notes, so I'm gonna kind of wing it. Number one, AGM. Everybody knows what AGM. It's an absorbent glass mat. It was something that came after the original acid type lead acid batteries okay one agm is obviously the most affordable when we step out of that lead acid it is very safe and stable with pretty much no risk at all yes they can still swell up with being overcharged but they're spill proof they work in pretty much any degree they i mean they're just good batteries but they don't recharge as quickly as a lithium they are very very heavy and they take up way more space, okay? That's some of the cons. The, I would say the bigger one, go back then, the bigger one though is charge rate. So lithium allows you to, when you, you get on it, it can refresh very quickly where AGM doesn't. And then also to get that full 
amperage out of those AGMs, you gotta go under 10 volts. Most of the equipment you should never run anywhere near there where lithium doesn't have to go that low. So that's some of the bigger, the bigger things. It's also a shorter lifespan, about three to 500 cycles. So um, not but a couple of years and they start really dimming down. Okay, the next type is lithium, which is lithium iron phosphate, LFP, um, pros and cons. Super lightweight, 70% lighter than AGM. Fast charging and discharging. AGM could take hours to fully charge, lithium not. Uh, stable voltage under the load, which means when you're really pulling on that capacity, you'll see it stabilize. It'll stay stable much longer. 2,000 cycles, life cycles. So we're talking about three to 500, 2,000. Way longer time with lithium. So if you look at the cost and the longevity, way better. Okay. Charging voltage, though, is there's a con because in a factory uh, alternator setup, it's like 13.8, 13.6. Optimal charging on like a LiPo 4 is 14.4 to 14.8, which means it also sits higher than an AGM. But to work properly, you need either a factory alternator that does charge that high or go with an aftermarket for it to properly work. It can be sensitive what we talked about in the last question with you know sub-zero or under 20 de degree, uh, but it is best for performance and longevity. Okay, and then we're gonna get to another question here from Zaz69ED, who is a big supporter of all my platforms, groups, channels, man, much love. Uh, his is from Car Audio 101, episode three. It says, you touched upon batteries and caps. Please explain the difference between it and what is okay or not. Okay to mix. Uh, I've seen people understand what AGM or lithium sodium, which we just talked about. Can you run them together, blah, blah, blah. Zaz capacitors, and I'm not gonna talk about those one and five farad caps. I'm gonna talk about super banks like we sell from Excess Power that are 1,000 farad. That is awesome and can be used with AGM, lithium, sodium, it doesn't matter. And those are made to charge and discharge in milliseconds. So as the base hits, it refreshes and recharges and gives another burst. They're great to put in. They're so strong that they can start your car, but I just don't really recommend that <clears throat> by itself. These are made to add into a system to really help with dimming of lights or when you have very large like burps or just notes, frequencies, that really helps keep everything stable. So putting that in line with any aftermarket battery is an awesome idea, but <clears throat> Zaz, I see you and now you see me. All right, question three. Why is a higher output alternator necessary when running certain types of batteries? Okay, we sell a ton of Mechman. I think we're probably well over $300,000 in cost this year alone and only not even well, we're close to halfway through of the year. But for 500 bucks, when your batteries are 500 bucks, a Mechman alternator by far is just an awesome thing to put in there. And even at a 240 amp output, just fixes everything, right? Uh, your factory alternator only really has enough to run the vehicle and a little bit extra. It is not made for all that accessory stuff. So uh, why is it important? Increased power demand, proper charging voltage, battery health and longevity, avoid an electrical system strain. We're talking about charging voltage. And if you're going into lithium, it has a higher sitting voltage or a higher charging voltage with the factory alternator doesn't do very well. So you wanna do that. Electrical system drain, yeah, you keep just killing on it. You're gonna fry the alternator and you're gonna just kill down the battery over time because it's not made to be used that way. Go with the high amp alternator all the time. Even on a smaller system, it won't hurt you. It can only make things better. Okay, we are going to the next comment, Ironhead320. With this is from Car Audio 101 episode three. Why should you why should you use the HPF on collapses? High pass. I'm guessing he's talking about the frequency, the crossover. Okay. Coaxials are a type of full range speaker, but they're not really made to play just bass. So using a high pass crossover, which we're gonna get into questions like that in the future, and cutting off lower notes so it plays from say upper bass or mid-level bass on up allows that speaker to play within its design. Now, when you look at the speaker, there'll be specs and it'll tell you how low it's made to play and how high. 
So with a crossover, you could at least cut off so it doesn't go any lower. With a DSP, you can cut it off at low and high, so you can really separate that it's not going above its limit. So HPF, high pass, crossover, you definitely want to use them, unless you're just talking about factory radio power. Once you get an amplification, use the crossover on the amplifier or an external EQ crossover DSP. But I see you, Iron Head, and now you see me. Okay, number four, which types of batteries can or cannot be used together in the same? Okay, this is a really good one. We get this all the time and there is actually some info here. Okay, AGM, AGM, no problem. Lith, uh, acid up front, AGM in the back, okay. Definitely wanna get rid of acid. But AGM with lithium, okay, but they recommend isolating it. There's a few reasons why I'm gonna get there. One, the AGM sitting voltage, lithium sitting voltage, which means when the car is off, it will backfeed to level out. You're constantly killing down your lithium. By using an isolator, that will stop that, okay? So you can put them together, but you gotta be safe about it. Why would you have to put it together? Well, if you don't do a battery delete, there is only a few sources out there. Excess Power just made one where you could use the lithium under the hood with that extreme heat. What you will not put together is lithium and sodium, two different chemical makeups. You cannot do that. Do not mix sodium and lithium. Lithium with lithium, AGM with lithium, being smart. And then you also need to know the lithium. Is it a 14.8 or like the LTO, which go above 16? Definitely don't use LTO at 16 and an AGM at 12.6, not gonna be good. Definitely isolate it where you're just using the AGM to start the vehicle and then the lithium starts over. Some vehicles, you could just use that higher voltage, but I've seen some vehicles act pretty funny when you go over 16 volts. Things start to glitch and go crazy. So in the Yukon, we have a separate alternator charging at normal parameters with a regular AGM style, or in this case, we just replaced it with a lithium that has made the charge at that lower voltage. That runs all the factory. Then on the big uh, lithium, the big Jeff batteries, higher voltage, that's running the system. But do not mix match lithium and sodium. Okay, I could go real deep in that, but we don't need to. That is what you need to think about. Okay, from Carl Audio 101, episode three again. There is original whiz. For an odd number of speakers of subwoofers, you multiply the number of speakers in series, divide by the number of speakers for parallel. Series connect positive. Okay, I remember what you were talking about. We were talking about ohms and how to figure that up. And when you're wiring in parallel, it cuts in half, series doubles. And he's talking about when you have odd number of speakers, you can divide that ohm into the amount of speakers to get that impedance level. Original whiz, I see you, you see me. Thank you for the love in the comments. Let's get on to question five. What is the recommended high pass HPF uh, filter for setting coaxials and how does it sound uh, affect sound performance? Well, we we're just kind of touching on that. And I'm going to give you something simple. If you're using coaxials with a subwoofer, recommend 80 to 100 hertz and up. Without a subwoofer, meaning you're just kind of running that factory, but you've put power to mids and highs, you can run it about 50 to 70 and up. So you get a little bit more of that base out of the coaxial. Now, when you're using a high power amp or you're tuning this DSP, Definitely 90 to 120 hertz and up. Now, that's not perfect because you gotta look at the specs on your coaxial and what the factory recommends. But without a subwoofer, you're gonna try to get a little bit more bass out of it, but you gotta do without distortion and blowing them up, right? So you're not gonna get as higher volume. Cutting off at 80 or 100 or higher will give you more volume, less distortion. But great question. Okay. We're gonna to go to the next comment, which was the same thing, Car Audio 101 Episode 3, Chris Ritterson, Ritterson, dash V6C. Awesome information, brother. Thank you for all you do. Planning to order a couple of them ML12R machete sub soon. Hey, Chris, thank you for supporting me, the channel, and all my employees, and really all the followers, because all this helps out do these type of videos and giveaways and everything else. I see you. You see me, man, and I give you a shout out. All right, last one, question six for episode five. How can soundproofing a vehicle improve audio quality and reduce unwanted noise? I love sound at me. One, 
It improves audio clarify, uh, clarity and bass response. I'm gonna break this down. Um, panel vibration. Uh, it enhances the performance of the speakers. Tighter bass, cleaner mids. All the way around, it will help the quality and the clarity of the sound. Road noise, huge. When you buy an expensive car, and what I mean by that is my BMW, my Wagoneer, uh, you get in that or you get in my Dodge Ram 3500, which is not a cheap vehicle, the road noise is so different. When I get in my uh, BMW and my Ram, it's like when the door shut, it's like just everything goes away. Road noise comes in through the vehicle, which then distorts the music or makes you have to turn it up to overcome that. So using sound lighting, not just on for speakers and subs, but doing it in the vehicle does that, okay? Tire, road noise, engine exhaust sound, and my exhaust is super loud. With that, nothing on there, it would just come right through the vehicle. Windy noise, noise uh, doors, mirrors, that wind blowing over there catches, makes those noises good. Boost system efficiency. Big time, if you don't have to crank up the volume just to overcome the outside noise or the rattles or all that, it is gonna be more efficient. You don't have to even play it as loud to sound as good. So sound editing, big in my book. Okay, that was question number five. I have one more comment to go over and that's gonna end up Car Audio 101, episode five. Big shout out to one Gotsi, Gotsi, G-A-W-D-T-S-I, same thing on episode three. First view, first comment. Dude, really awesome that you're the first one on there to see it and comment on it. Big shout out to you for jumping on it. I guarantee you hit that bell so when it popped up, you were on it. Everybody else do the same thing. Hit the subscribe button, follow like us and hit the bell. Or on Facebook, you can change that we pop up as a default. So do that. Big shout out to you, one Gotsi, and thank you for the support. Hey, listen, I'm Big Jeff from BigJeffAudio.com. Also, we're representing B2 Audio USA. Man, thank you so much for this and tune in. Coming up soon, episode six. I'll see you on the next one. Okay, so we are back. Okay, we're not back. Something happened.